Before we begin today's show, I would like to take some time to remind you about our sponsors. Fantasy Grounds, a virtual tabletop of choice. All of the beautiful maps and rolls you see tonight are done using Fantasy Grounds, which you can try for free at fantasygrounds.com. You can also get all of your miniatures from Wayland Games. Go to waylandgames.co.uk and get yourself a huge range of D&D, Warhammer and 40k minis for up to 20% off regular retail price. And Tabletop Loot, who sell incredible dice. Go and check them out at tabletoploot.com. Hello, and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. You're correct. I am not Virginia. I am not Tabletop Horde, but due to personal reasons, uh, she can be with us this evening and we've just found out. So what we're going to do is spend the next 15 to 20 minutes talking about Dishonored. We played a little bit last week and it's super fun. It's just gone up for pre-order, I think Tuesday of this week. Yeah, Tuesday of this week, so you can pre-order it right now. Get a hold of that PDF and start playing. It uses Modifius' 2D20 system and all of these lovely people were victims of it last week. Um, what I'd like to do is briefly go around, tell us about your character and how you found making them, and then we'll discuss a little bit about other mechanics and the plot. I'd like to thank everyone who is in chat right now, uh, thank you for hanging with us, and thank you if you're watching on YouTube. Let's go and say hi to Jordan, also known as Sassy Bissander. Hi Jordan. Oh, I oh. was muted. Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> um, oh man, so we're talking about our characters? Okay. Yeah, so I know, um, yeah, about the build and your ideas for them and how you found that whole thing. Yeah. So um, I have a lot of fun. So I don't always build my characters. I build my characters a little bit differently sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll go in with a set idea. I knew that like going into this game, um, I'm playing a very reserved character in Star Trek, which is not my stereotypical vibe. Um, and so I knew I wanted to play someone who's a little bit bolder, maybe a little bit more punchy, uh, so that this sass level can uh, exude. Um, so when I was going through the list of things, of course, people have already chosen some things. Um, and so I'm trying to be, you know, different because I gotta stick out. Uh, but uh, I ended up finding the, if I can get my character sheet to open and remember what it was called, but the miscreant, um, which really stood out to me because it's just kind of like a rebel, um, kind of very punchy, but not like dedicated to being punchy. Uh, they just kind of like to wreak havoc and that's something I'd like a lot of fun. And so um, for the name, what I did is I went and I looked up. Um, the great thing about this book is it tells you what you're looking for. So like, I haven't played Dishonored the video game. Um, I've seen some of it. Um, I've talked about it with some friends. I've read a lot of content on it. Um, but it kind of gives you an idea of what the setting is and where you can go. So for names, it tells you you can look into like names from the 17th and 18th century. And so I just went and looked for really obscure names from that time period um, and went from that. But yeah, she's a punchy little feisty chicken nugget uh, who likes to evidently beat people up and steal their money. Uh, but they were mean, so it was worth it. But that's how it was. So there you go. Eat the rich, steal their money, beat them up, because they're all mean. Uh, <laughs> let's drop on down to the wonderful Aram, also known as Vartian. Uh, let's hear a little bit right. about your character. So Hardy Foster is a 19-year-old, 6 foot 5, lean fuckboy who just basically jumps ship off his uncle's whaling ship and is uh, literally trying to get his feet under him as a young person in a brand new city that he's not familiar with where he does better on the sea than on land. He never enjoyed whaling. He kind of was forced to because he was adopted by his brother's uncle and he was kind of forced into it. He loved the sea. He never really enjoyed whaling. Like that was always, that was a very traumatic process for him. And so he's just trying to figure out like what his life is about now. And... I, I, as far as the game, I found it great. Uh, as far as making the uh, system, like the character creation system really took it through 
uh, uh, when they showed you comics where it was like, here's how the actual mechanics work, and it can look just look at pictures, <laughs> and like it can walk you through it. That was a godsend. That I I had not seen that before, and that was incredibly helpful <laughs> for me to actually visually see how it all worked. That really kind of clued it home for me. So I found this. I found the whole process really easy. And the art for this game is so good. You can kind of see a lot of it in the background. I've put the blood flies on the overlay, which I've been reliably informed don't actually uh, appear in Dunwall, but I think blood flies are super cool. Uh, so I put them on the overlay. We've got a little rap because the rap plague, let's oh, on that side. The rap plague was a, a big storyline uh, right before the two shot that we're playing. And we will be picking up the two shot next week, so never fear. But there's something cool about the characters, uh, which is similar to. How many of the 2d20 systems are set up in that you have these core ideas i think in this game they're called truths right um so you establish this truth and it's something that is very narrative and it kind of is specific but it's also vague so you can manipulate it to give you bonuses uh i'm wondering vartian what's uh, a hardy truth uh well his first truth is that he is most alert when he's experiencing new places and new things i took ex i took explorer for him so uh he gets bored easily right he's not good with routine he's not great at attention to detail but whenever he's in whenever he's experiencing something new he's very aware and he can pick out details better and 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 spot new things better than most people and his second truth would be that uh he wants to trust adults that show him a kindness he's got uh, daddy issues from him being uh, an abusive, a drunk, and mom issues from her passing away in childbirth. So he's like, he's never really had a family. So like any adult that shows him kindness, he's kind of, he's going to trust, which is not a great, you know, trait to have. Uh, and I think that's a great segue to a very trustworthy adult, the wonderful <laughs> Raven. Uh, <laughs> and your character, let's hear a bit about them. Uh, yeah, so Zebby is uh, very not trustworthy at all. <laughs> um, I uh, also have never played Dishonored before, so I came into this whole thing a, a bit blind, much like Jordan. Um, and uh, I found the, the book was super easy to follow, and um, reading through some of it, I was trying to figure out what character to go with. And I realized I already had a character that would fit the world really well and would be perfect for a one or two shot type game. Um, a character from a novella I wrote. And so I was like, it would be really easy to adapt to this character. Uh, she would fit perfect in this world. So that's what I decided to do. Uh, so Zevi's a, a former uh, ship's surgeon who essentially uh, took her knowledge of how to put people back together and make them stay alive. and. Uh, reverse injured that into becoming the perfect assassin. Um, so she kills people for money and is a high-functioning alcoholic. That's actually her flaw. And her truth is if That's you don't cool get flaw. close... Uh, yeah. Her truth is if you don't get close, you can't get hurt. So... Um, oh, I feel that yeah. in my heart. <laughs> She's a very uh, broken character. Um but she doesn't tend to, obviously doesn't tend to show that she's got a lot of bravado and um, much like um, Jordan, I just drew a blank on your character's name. Uh, Hellwise, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> much like Hellwise enjoys a good fight. Who doesn't enjoy a good fight in any system? Let's be honest. Uh, how did you find the fight that you did? You had a little bit of a scrap with some city guard last week. How did you find that in terms of the momentum and uh, the fun of that? Um, uh, it was very exciting. Um, I unfortunately had <clears throat> very bad luck on my rolls, um, but I didn't feel like, oh, I rolled poorly, so, you know, this is horrible and I hate it. Uh, it was uh, still exciting. Um, and I didn't feel like, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to instantly be dead. I still felt like it was a, a challenge and uh, I was going to be able to get away, uh, though it was going to be very difficult to do so. Um, so the combat was really great. Um, it reminded me a lot of Star Combat, which is also um, something that I enjoy. Um, and uh, it's flexible enough too that I was able to go, okay, my, my idea of just outright killing 
this guard, um, before they have a chance to do anything, has gone horrible. How can I salvage this? And uh, was able to pivot into a different strategy of like, okay, I'm going to draw as much attention as possible, go the total opposite direction with this, and try to lead the guards off so the rest of the party can get past. Um, and it was flexible enough that I was able to do that without feeling like it was going to literally kill me to do it. And I know that during the game last time we had a question of which timeline is this in? And basically the way the game has been designed is that you can play in kind of any part of the game that you enjoyed. It could be after Blood Plague, during. Um, so you have all of those options thanks to the way Modiphius has made this. And Raven, you met an important NPC in the world of Dishonored. The Outsider. Yeah. How was that? That was, that was really cool. Um, and it was very fun, uh, especially from Zevi's perspective, because Zevi's very much a, like, I don't believe in anything but me kind of uh, person. So <clears throat> instead of, like, you know, a normal person being like, oh my gosh, this is like some ghost or some cool, powerful being, she's just like, wait, you've been watching me? Wow, you're a creep. And uh, it was really fun to see that interaction, and Virginia played it beautifully. Um, so it was fun to see uh, that interaction from that perspective. Uh, but as a player, I was sitting here going like, oh my god, this is so cool. What is this person? What are they? What's going on? How am I getting these cool powers? Uh, it was Oops. a blast. <laughs> it was super cool. And I, I love that slightly supernatural edge that's coming into this steampunk, whale punk world, because it's it's a little bit of everything, right? You've got dark fantasy in here, you've got the steampunk element, because it's a bit Victoriana, so you can pull on your understanding of how cities work, and, you know, machinations, machinations even, both. Uh, and then, you know, you've got these gods that kind of linger on the fringes. Um, and Max, I'd like to talk to you about your character and your dive into Dishonored. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the world itself just feels very akin to the game. They've done a really good job, I think, because I played a few hours of, of the first Dishonored game and I, I enjoyed it a lot. The, the stealth elements are all there um, and just the elements that have been translated feel so well translated that you feel like you're in the game. Um, but my character is Sebastian and he also is of the miscreant archetype as Jordan's character, but I kind of took him in a different way um, as he is actually originally not from Dunwall, he's from the island of Sirkonos, um, but came over at a young age and um, eventually found his way into this uh, job as a uh, tavern uh, guard. Um, and so a lot of my uh, points and um, skills and everything went into more intimidation and wanting to make sure that he was a hardy enough guy that should he get into a fight or you know whether it's because he needs to remove someone from the bar or just any other reason he can do so and take a few hits but still maybe have enough uh stamina to outlast them um and then you know the, the talents that have been listed are so well thought out to fit those archetypes and then um, just creating the character was super easy and picking out the items that they had, it, it was just as easy as any other game that I've been able to play, mm -hmm. so. And what, what talents did you, you pick out for your miscreant? So the talent that I have is called Shoulder Charge. Um, and when, I, when my character succeeds at fight, fighting forcefully to attack mm -hmm. and you move, so if I attack and move in to get into reach of the enemy, I can spend a point of momentum to impose a truth known as knock prone onto them as part of that. So I just run in and just knock them straight down. Uh, so let's talk about these these word modifiers really briefly. It says uh, forcefully, uh, was it, is cleverly one of them? There's something like that, yep. right? For your intellect chests. Uh, I love this idea of like this descriptor for like how you're taking an action. Um, and it really feeds for me into a roleplay idea where you're doing something in a way, right? You're not just attacking, you're attacking cleverly, you're attacking forcefully. Or, you know, how did you all like that? Have you played in a system that uses a similar style of thing before? Or 
I mean, I played in systems where um, I'm good at certain things, right? And that kind of drives mm -hmm. how you're going to play the character. I kind of like like if you're a agile character, you'd play more and more in agile roles. But this is a little bit more broad, where you're thinking, well, I do things swiftly. Does it necessarily mean agile? It could mean you make rash decisions, or you run really fast, or you just or you or you make snap, you know choices and if i do things carefully like everything i do then is like well i'm not just going to rush in because i'm better when i'm careful so it really just helped drive the whole character and i like that because it really reinforces what i'm doing and then benefits that with game mechanics i think yeah, also the... like <clears throat> go ahead sorry <laughs> sorry um the only one I've ever played that, that has anything similar to that was um, there's some Powered by the Apocalypse uh, settings that have some things like that where like maybe your weapon is loud or uh, um, there's some that are messy, things like that, uh, which kind of gives you a little bit of a descriptor of kind of how to play off of that. But this one kind of takes that idea and runs with it. Um, it does give you a lot more of a mental image of how exactly your character is doing this and that makes it a lot easier to convey in the role play as well yeah i think with like so i play dungeons and dragons mostly i've played other um settings and things like that um but i think that the real the beautiful part about this is you know you're so confined in dungeons and dragons when you have to choose your proficiencies so like you don't get to choose how something is done. So maybe I am really good at punching people, but I'm not good at doing them straight to their face. So I think the whole element of having almost these two different stats um, that complement each other and allow you to have the, um, it allows you to round out your character really, because I mean, you may not be an loud about person, but you may be able to do some things that loud people do in your own way. I think it's more authentic to how we as human beings work. We're not good at everything, but there are things that we can be good at if we do them in the way that suits us. And so I really love that whole aspect of it. And Max, you've actually played a, a bit of the, the games. Uh, is there anything you'd like to highlight where you're like, yes, this makes this feel like dishonored for me? Yeah, um, I would say with regards to how you can approach a situation, it feels very similar to the game in that way, because in the game, you are allowed to just go around and slay all your enemies that you need to to get to your objective and do what you need to do. But you can also be stealthy. And this, I think with the sim the system, allows that to happen as well very easily. Um, so if you want to just go in and brawl with a few people, you can. But if you also want to go in and just be a stealthy assassin, you can absolutely do that as well. And the system just is so well thought around that. Awesome. Well, I think this is where we're going to end our little chat for today. A little reflection on part one of Dishonored. Please, please come back next week when we will have part two. Uh, and maybe they will fall into the the drowned district the sunken district i forget which the flooded district right and get you my hagfish to swim. Throw us i just remember there's hagfish all right i just remember there's these horrific sounding fish in this water and i am fingers crossed that someone falls in uh thank you so much to chat i've kept an eye out and you had some great questions uh we will see you very soon let's briefly go around and give me a shout out guys for any projects you have going on and we'll go same way clockwise around starting with jordan Hi, I am Jordan, aka Sassy with Sander. You can find me on all the social medias under Sassy with Sander. Um, I run a music YouTube where I do mashups and covers. Um, I am Adina on Fate and the Fable Maidens, the super explosive, fiery puff ball of energy. Um, I also help run jam game streams where we play a lot of video games um, and we do some cosplay things as well. And I think that's all I do. I can never remember if I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well if there is anything else i'm sure if you follow jordan over on the twitter there will be a tweet to tell you all about it and aram where can we find you and what are you up to hey i'm still working on uh two D, &D podcasts uh 
Rise of the Gods and God's Fall, and I'm launching a short run series uh, through a classic D&D module, Castle Amber, which I'm really excited about. It's been one of my favorites for a long time, and I had to rewrite a lot of it for 5e rules, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Then you can find all of that uh, on, I'll post links to it on Twitter at Vardian. That sounds amazing. Castle Vampire, very, very cool. It's and a great Raven, one. what about you? Hey. Um, well, uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Raven, just like it says under my face. Uh, and on Twitch at uh, same thing, just drop the the part off of it. So just R A B V Y N. Um, you can actually find me there tonight at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. That's uh, daylight time um, for uh, a community one shot that we're doing over there. Um, so that's where you can find me next. Uh, but I do all kinds of stuff, uh, too much stuff to list uh, very briefly. So if you check out my Twitter, you can find out all about what I do there. Thank you so much. And Max. Hi, um, so you can find me everywhere on Twitter and Twitch at MaximusJ07, same handle. Um, I stream occasionally here on Twitch. Um, I DM on the side sometimes, but you can come over and say hi to me on Twitter and we'll talk I talk about TTRPGs and just all the, the fun things. So, yeah. Awesome. Brief plug for me this weekend on Sunday the 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern, we have our monthly Meat Grinder, which is a charity stream raising money this month for Doctors Without Borders. If you're free at all on Sunday, please consider stopping by, hitting the retweet button, and dropping in, sending some love. If you have any spare money, uh, please consider donating. It will help the heroes, both the Doctors Without Borders and the ones in the meat grinder. Uh, reminder, we will be live again at 7 p.m. Eastern tonight with the Haunting a Seawall Orphanage. That is 11 p.m. UK, if you are one of our UK viewers. And also a reminder that this weekend, the UK's clocks change. So if you are playing in an international game, double check what time you will be playing at next week. Uh, much love. I will be posting an update to our schedule over on the Twitters. Take care. We will see you later for a little bit of horror in the haunting of Seawall Orphanage. Goodbye, everyone. See you later.